guys, so I wanted to do a video that was a little bit different today but addresses a question that I often get asked which is what are some of my favourite things to do in London but specifically what are some of my favourite cheap or even free things to do in London. So I've lived in London for three years now and before then I used to visit friends and family here when I got the opportunity. I'm a big fan of the city, however it is renowned for being quite expensive. I, though, like many of you, I'm on quite a tight budget, so I have to find myself entertaining things to do that do not cost me a lot of money and preferably cost me no money at all. And I wanted to share those things with you. Some of these things are probably kind of obvious and will come up if you search for things to do in London in general. Others, however, might be a little bit more niche and you may not have heard of before, but regardless, these are some of my personal favourites. So I'm giving them my stamp of approval and hopefully there is something for everybody whether you live in London or have plans to visit London these are things you can check out but without further ado let's get into my favourite cheap and inexpensive things to do in London I'm going to kick things off with the free things because who doesn't love something that costs nothing um, but they're in no other particular order um, like I mentioned some of these things are a little bit obvious but there are tons and tons of free museums and art galleries in London that will not cost you a single penny to go into often they host special exhibitions which you do have to pay for but like the main collections are completely free enormous and you know can entertain you for weeks on end because there's so much to see now two of my favorite free museums and art galleries in London are of course the British Museum. The collections at the British Museum span millennia and continents and it is an absolutely fascinating building in itself. There's so much to see and do in there and my particular love of it comes from its incredible antiquities collection. There are so many ancient artifacts in there so if you're at all interested in ancient Greek or ancient Roman history then it might be worth checking out if you haven't already but they also cover the Egyptians, the Assyrians to the uh, British Enlightenment and it is such a wonderful wonderful place to spend a day or a couple of hours you can either you know pick a section and just focus on that for a short period of time or just like I said, kick back and wander for the entire day through all of the different centuries. I also adore the National Art Gallery, which is situated in Trafalgar Square. This, like the British Museum, is one of the largest collections of its kind in uh, the city and in the country. But although I tend personally to steer more towards museums that contain sort of um, physical artefacts as opposed to um, art on canvas, there is something I love so much about the National Gallery. Maybe it's because there are a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of paintings of Greek and Roman myths but I am biased and I have my preferences so I do enjoy the fact that I can wander through the different centuries of art in this in this um, art gallery and find loads and loads of amazing myths depicted by different artists. Again this covers centuries and centuries of art by artists from various different countries. They've got some paintings by some of my favourite artists like Degas stored in there and Botticelli and Titian and equally they recently acquired a self-portrait by Artemisia Gentileschi who is an incredible woman artist from the the Baroque period that I adore and I was so excited when they got her self-portrait I have gone to see it. It's also been on tour this year but I imagine it will have already returned by the time this video was up or will be returning so it's worth uh, popping in to see. And art galleries I think appeal to a variety of different types of people. My mum's the kind of person that will go into an art gallery, pick a painting and just kind of peruse it for like a little while, have a think about it, study it, whereas I'm the kind of person who like glances at things for like 30 seconds and thinks, oh yeah, cool, and then moves on to something else, you know? There's no right or wrong way to do an art gallery and um, there's an endless array of different styles of art in the National Gallery. But lastly, for big, famous art galleries and museums and on the flip side of things, for those of you that prefer modern art, there is of course the Tate Modern. The Tate Modern is situated on the River Thames on the South Bank and I find not only is it a fascinating art gallery that often does really interesting exhibitions, although like I mentioned exhibitions often uh, do incur a charge, it is just like a really interesting bit of London. I really like the South Bank, especially on a summer's day. There is things to like walk along and take in and just get a little bit of a feel for London. So I just think it's a nice area to visit if you haven't already. But something a little bit more obscure 
and still within the realms of history, but nowhere near as big as any of these museums I've mentioned, is the London Mithraeum. So the London Mithraeum is actually an ancient Roman temple from what, back when London was actually known as Londinium and was a Roman settlement, currently situated underneath the Bloomberg building. So this site has a fascinating history. It was basically uncovered after um, bombings in London during World War II and was, you know, excavated, removed from the earth and popped on top of a car park in London, super random. Then recently when they were building the new Bloomberg building, I think, they decided to relocate it to near its original site. So it's not in exactly the same place it was before, but you know, it's like meters away. Um, and the idea was that you could then go downstairs underneath this Bloomberg building and visit the site in its natural habitat and get a feel for what this temple was like in antiquity and it, they kind of turned it into an immersive experience, although it, it is ruins. The Mithraeum cult was an all-male Roman cult that we don't actually know that much about but it's really interesting to speculate and it's just like a fun little tour that you can do. It is entirely free although you are supposed to book a tour in advance on their website so check out what slots they have free but there's usually tons of free spaces that you can visit every day. But for those of you that have had enough <laughs> uh, history and art, which is fair enough, we all get to that point, and are looking perhaps for something to do in the evening, one of my top recommendations of places to go in London is the Angel Comedy Club. So the Angel Comedy Club has two locations, one of which is literally in Angel, which is in North London, and the other one is in Camden, both really fun areas of London with lots of like bars and restaurants, so if you're looking, you know, to like make an evening of it, it's and they're nice places to go, but on top of that you can also kill a couple of hours in an incredibly hilarious way by seeing some free comedy. So multiple evenings a week, the Angel Comedy Club do free comedy evenings, which if you do have a few spare pounds at the end of, you can donate in their bucket and you you might also want to buy a pint at their bar. However, the event itself is entirely free. So if you get there, you know, before the hour it starts and settle down, uh, get on the waiting list, then you are bound to have a hilarious evening. Every time I've ever gone, the comedians have been incredible and you don't know who's going to be performing in advance of that night, but you usually get around three or four comedians standing up to, to test their material on you because it is very much an opportunity for comedians to run new material by an audience. I love live comedy, it's one of my favourite things to do. I've always been far more into live comedy than I have um, live music, is as nice as music is. So ever since I discovered that this existed in London, I have made sure to take advantage of it. They also do wonderful ticketed events on different nights, so if you do want to pay a little bit more and go and see something where you have a little bit more information about beforehand, then they're also worth checking out and they're usually quite cheap. But given that it is currently summer and the sun is shining outside and I'm about to leave my house so I'm going to get my sunblock on, one of the things I of course love to do is going for walks in some of the incredible parks in London. So London is this intense hustle, bustle, busy city with huge overpowering buildings, but at the same time there are pockets of expansive green which make you feel like you have escaped the city. For example, I think two of the biggest and best parks in London are Hampstead Heath, which is in the north, and Richmond Park, which is in the south. Both of which are massive, like I said, can make you feel like you're no longer in the city, provide really nice areas to walk if you enjoy a little stroll, as well as nice picnic locations, and Richmond Park in particular is full of deer. So if you just like to stare at deer, then it's the perfect place to go. But do beware of also standing in deer poo. I've been there, it's not nice. But my last recommendation for entirely free things is also summer specific and might be something that you've missed the opportunity to see this year, depending on when you've watched this video, but comes back every summer, so it's worth checking out, and that is the Royal Opera House in collaboration with BP's summer screenings. So during the summer, basically the Royal Opera House screen operas and ballets on huge outdoor screens in uh, public areas for people to just come down after work or whatever, sit, make themselves comfortable and enjoy. And opera and ballet are both quite expensive hobbies if you're into them and I, I do enjoy both going to see the opera and the ballet but I am restricted to how much money I have. So being able to go and see one screen not only at a lower cost but entirely free 
in the summer sunshine is always a treat. They do actually go beyond London though, so if you're elsewhere in Britain, do check out their website to see if there are screenings in a city near you. But I know that's not the only thing that you can go and see screened outdoors in London. If you're a tennis fan, I've had friends have gone to see the tennis on big screens. Not my cup of tea, but always worth checking out what else you can do of that ilk in London. I then have a couple of recommendations which do not have a set cost, but probably will incur spending once you do them. For example, one of those is to head on over to a board game cafe slash bar like Drafts London. So Drafts has a location in Hackney and Waterloo and I don't think it's the only of its kind, although it's the only one that I've experienced in London. But essentially this is your standard bar slash cafe slash eatery, somewhere you can go during the day or in the evening to grab something to eat or just have a drink or a coffee, but accompanied by board games. So take a friend or two, book a slot on their website. You can actually book quite a few hours just so they know how many of you there are, so what size of table you'll need in order to fit a game that can be played by that many people on it. And there's no extra charge for playing the games. You're only paying for your food and drink like you would anywhere else, but you get that added wonderful bonus of a selection of hundreds of games. So drafts have literally hundreds of games from the obvious to the obscure that you can dabble in. Either you can play favourite for three hours with friends or try a few new ones that you might then later end up buying for yourself because I know that feeling um, and really just like have a lot of fun. And if you're into things like board games and pub quizzes, you might find that even going to do a pub quiz at a pub costs you a few pounds here or there, whereas this is no extra charge, which I think is such a wonderful concept and such a fun way to spend an evening. I also want to mention something a little bit different, and that was Columbia Road Flower Market. Now, obviously, this is a market, so the intention of this is that you might come and buy something, which seems a little bit counterproductive for a video about cheap and free things to do in London. But every time I've gone to Columbia Flower Market, I've had so much fun, I've been so impressed. It is perhaps just for me as somebody outside of London, that real um, quintessential London market where people are shouting at you to buy this, it's this much, and I really enjoyed that because it's not really like Edinburgh at all for me. But it's also actually really well priced. So if you are into flowers or plants, so they sell loads and loads of house and outdoor plants, they're actually really reasonable. And I find when I go into a lot of specific plant shops or garden centres in London, they can be a little bit pricey. But Columbia Market is such good value for money and equally as the day goes on they often reduce things, whatever is left that they need to get rid of uh, before they pack up. Now this is every Sunday on Columbia Road which is in Hackney and yeah I just think it's a lot of fun, something worth checking out and you certainly don't need to spend much even if you want to take something away with you. Now something you do have to pay for but did you know that for between three and ten pounds you can actually go and see a ballet or an opera at the Royal Opera House because I didn't until recently. If you've ever been to the Royal Opera House which I had only once before I found out about these cheap tickets and somebody else took me because it's quite expensive. <laughs> Um, there are these benches along the sides on uh, some of like the upper levels. So they're not your traditional fold down comfortable seats, they are very much just like kind of benches, which naturally have a restricted view. However, I recently sat on these benches with a friend of mine to see a ballet performance and was so impressed by the fact that I got to see around 70% of what was going on on stage and you know, I'm willing to miss. 30% if the ticket cost me three pounds. But I also wonder if we'd manage to get in there a little bit quicker and get those 10 pound tickets a little bit further along. We might have even seen 80% of what was going on, which I'd be up for. Um, it's definitely something that I am now regularly checking for when tickets to operas and ballets do come out now as those cheap tickets before they are gone because what an incredible treat to be able to see something that is often quite expensive and a little bit inaccessible for such an affordable price and even though you might miss a little bit of the dancing or the performance you still get to hear all the wonderful live music and when I went to see this ballet not only did that include an orchestra but it also included occasional opera singing so I felt like I got a little bit of everything and it was such a wonderful experience that I wanted to make sure that you were aware of it if you were interested in those kind of things. It's also a fun way to try out that genre of uh, theatre if you haven't already. Although I will say I am not sure about the accessibility 
of this area of the theatre. We had to go upstairs to get to it and I'm not sure if there was a lift option that I'm aware of and it's also a lot more cramped than their regular seating. There are also some standing options so when you book on their website pay attention to whether you are booking a seat or whether you're booking a uh, slot to stand in for the few hours that you will be there which you might not mind for three hours but just something to be aware of when you're booking on their website. But next I'm going to go completely out there and recommend something to do from London that is not in London. Recently I went on a day trip with my friend Jen to Brighton and I had no idea that you could actually get really cheap train tickets to Brighton. So if you're in London, I've never been, I had never been to Brighton before this as you can tell. <laughs> if you're in London it takes about an hour on the train to get to Brighton and we went online and booked tickets for between like five or ten pounds return. I have a, a real card so mine was on the cheaper spectrum and Jen's was a couple pound more. Before I returned ticket I was actually really surprised because it would cost me more to go to Glasgow if I was living in Edinburgh still and when you go to Brighton there is this seaside. So London may be a big bustling city but for a few pounds and an hour's train ride you can visit the seaside which is something that I definitely think is worth checking out. This is not exactly a sunbathing beach, it is a pebble beach full of seagulls who will try to eat your chips or ice cream but I'm okay with that and I think it's a really nice thing to do with your day if you are in London but wanting to escape a little bit for not too much money. So those are some of my favourite free and inexpensive things to do in London. I do of course have other favourite museums etc in London that do cost a little bit more money that I don't therefore go to regularly but I have learned that regardless how much spare cash I have in a month I can always find something to entertain me in the massive city that is London. I do hope that you have perhaps discovered a new recommendation or just been encouraged to check one of these places out by this video and I would also love to hear from you if you have any recommendations of cheap or inexpensive things to do in London because I am always on the hunt for more fun stuff to do. But until next time, happy reading and I'll see you all again soon. Bye guys!